Hello friends, you're with a lonesome gamer and I'm playing Merchants and Marauders. Now I've just done the first turn. Uh, not too much happened. This guy here, Jan Peterson Hoft, he decided to become a pirate and already did his first raid against an English merchant and it didn't went too well. He only managed to get, I don't know, sometimes something like, I think something like nine bucks or so. It wasn't great and because his cargo bay was damaged he only could basically get one goods or he could carry one goods and one food uh, or one on a com, couple of prisoners here as contraband so he isn't doing very well and well the others try to do some trades and well they also weren't super successful with that anyways um, we go to the next turn and See how it goes. So we randomly determine the player order. So first goes red. And uh, let's see who that is. That's this guy over here. And yeah, he's going to go. Well, he might even either go to Caracas or Basterre. That's where he can get rid of his textiles here in a good way. The let's see in Basterre there is a a mission called the Race, and he needs to. Okay, got a number of dice equal to your seamanship and ship's maneuverability combined. And then you need two successes. So the maneuverability is two, seamanship is two. Uh, he's got a maneuverability plus one. So he would get five dice. Mm, that's possible. So maybe I should actually move down here. To Caracas. Yeah, I think I want to do that. So, oh, but before I do so, I have to roll for the weather and I have to draw an event card. So, let's see what we got here. That's a six. So, now we might see a storm coming up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Okay, so we got the wind is southwest. And that means because it's the wind is coming from the east in general, right? Although it's northeast, we'll see the storm coming up. Now the storm will show up in one of these eastern areas here in a random area. It will never show up in an area where is where there is a player ship right now, but that's not the case here. So we're going to roll the eight-sided die again. Uh, that is a six, so the storm shows up here at St. John. Okay, great. Now, I said this is my house rule. The way this works is my house rule. I kind of want to follow these, um, yeah, a more realistic way, and that is that the storms usually come from the Atlantic and then go west across the Caribbean and then at some point simply either disappear or they move toward the land and then disappear. And I'm going to follow with my storm house rule this pattern a little bit. Okay. Um, so I'm going to move and if I go southwest, it doesn't cost me anything, so that's pretty awesome. I'm going to go in here 
for free because of the wind. Oh, and I forgot, gosh, I forgot the event card. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, so first non-player ships move. So this thing moves south. So the thing is, if you have to follow a specific movement and you cannot go there because there is land or there's simply no sea zone adjacent, then you go to the next sea zone which is in clockwise order. So that means we gotta go west again and this thing gets another five bucks. Okay. So then it says here war and peace. So war, if there is no active war, take a bounty token from each nation, randomly draw two and place them in the war space. Okay, let's see. Uh, I need... Okay. So, let's find out who's at war. Okay, Spain. That goes right here, uh, like this. Spain is at war with Holland with, with the Dutch. Well, that makes sense, right? So, I think they had that War of Independence going on, the 80 Years War, what it was, for quite a while. Okay. So, what does that mean? Well, it means that Spanish captains may not enter Dutch ports, but there are no Spanish captains, but there is a Dutch captain here, so he's not allowed to enter Spanish ports. Okay, great. Um, so that is not... Yeah, that's not too interesting. Okay, this is it. This is all that happens. But that has quite some impact. And that war will go on, I guess, until there is another event card that cancels it. So it's Captain John Knox now. And, I mean, to screw the pirate over, he could now enter this port because uh, the pirate... Jan Peterson Ho, he cannot enter here because this is Spanish. But so he could not get rid of his his textiles. But I think I prefer to go here because there I can get this mission. So I'm gonna move down here, which is free now, and then I'm gonna enter the port, which is my first action. Now inside a port. I can I will do my second action the port action and uh, if you want to sell something in a port I want to go to Caracas anyway because of the the fugitives if you want to sell something in a port you're gonna have to do that as the first thing in your port action so that means once I'm going to sell textiles for 6 because they are in demand and then I'm going to sell the fugitives for 10. I'm going to keep this card, flip it that way to indicate that I sold a contraband. Because of, uh, for each 2 contraband sold I will get a glory point. So that means 16 bucks for me. Okay, 
And of course, we're going to flip that because it's the start of the action. This is the plank. And that helps me to control my uh, crew, the loyalty of my crew a little bit. Okay, so what do we do now? Um, I think first... Hmm, I don't want to claim that mission. Uh, I think first I want to buy a uh, new cargo. So again, um, usually I can draw six cards here in Caracas. It's special. You see, you can draw eight cargo cards. That's a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I haven't seen that one, so that goes simply back in here. And that is perfect. Look at that. We got three rum. That is pretty awesome. Um, yeah, I think I want to definitely buy this. Not only because it's the cheapest, but also if you sell three goods that are in demand, you get a glory point. So that's definitely something I want. Right now, only in Tortuga, rum is in demand. So let's hope that, for example, this guy doesn't go there. That would be bad. The cool thing is these three cost me only three bucks. So that's definitely great. Um, sadly, I only have a cargo bay of four. Otherwise, I could have bought these here or a pair of those too, but that's not going to happen. And by the way, I forgot, before I can actually do that, I have to discard the, the in-demand token, draw a new one, and if that should be run now, uh, that, that would be bad luck, because then the run cards that I've drawn, no it isn't, would have been discard it immediately. So this is uh, Cocoa here. Or Cocoa, I'm not totally sure how you spell that. And now I buy these three cards for well only three bucks. That's that's pretty awesome. There's no contraband here, which is a little sad, but it's not a big deal. So then I can claim that mission. So I'm simply going to take that and that's the race. <clears throat> so let's see. Diego Tenorio is getting too old to participate in the annual aristocratic sailing match. He asks you to participate on his behalf. Sail to Petite Guave and during a port action there roll a number of dice equal to your seamanship and ship's maneuverability combined. Get two successes to win the race and complete the mission. Otherwise the mission fails. Okay so the mission goes here now. I can only have one mission at a time. But I could claim another mission and discard that one. Petit Guav is here, so it's kind of on the way. We want to go here to Tortuga with our goods. So uh, I think that's okay. Um, so yeah, I think that's all right. Maybe I go to Tortuga first and then on my way back or something I go to Petit Guav. We'll see about that. Uh, but still, we have that mission and that's fine. If we fulfill that, we get 15 gold and a glory point. I realize it's not that easy. It says here requirement influence check. So before we can actually claim the mission, we have to make that roll. And we have an influence of three. 
So let's see if we're successful. And we are clearly successful here. Great. Okay, I wonder when the mission is replenished. Let's take a look here. Immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, God. So. <clears throat> we draw a new mission. English letter of Mark. Uh-huh. Ah, okay, you can become a privateer, but you have to have at least one, you need one non-English bounty. Okay, so this guy cannot use that, and the others are not interested right now. So that's kind of a shame. It is placed here in Bridgetown. Okay. Okay, now next I want to try to acquire a rumor and I will buy that upgrade for, so I got to, overall I got to spend five bucks. So the upgrade goes on my ship here, the plank, and it helps me to avoid uh, the, um, loss of crew loyalty and then I try to acquire a rumor so I can roll again an influence check and this time I'm gonna do that in here and yes we were successful great so that means I'm allowed to draw a rumor card and it says adrift a storm-damaged Spanish merchant ship is drifting in the Caribbean Sea. Okay, so there is this the Caribbean Sea zone here. And if we do a successful scout action there, we can locate the ship. So we can either help the crew. It says draw five cargo cards to keep or ignore one escape icon. Okay, or merchant raid. Uh, that's tricky. Obviously, I think I'm not going to do the raid, but the problem is I don't have enough space here to draw five cards. Hmm. So I guess that has to wait a little bit. Not the best rumor for me right now. Maybe I should have... That's okay now. It's okay. Okay, so that was now my second action. And as a third action, I'm gonna leave the port here and then I'm done. Okay, uh, let's see who goes next. Yellow goes next. Well, and he simply moves here to Basse Terre. That was his first action. As a second action, he's going to sell the textiles here for six bucks. They were in demand, so that's not bad. And then he is allowed to hire this guy here. Play this card during a port action in Bastère. So let's see if he succeeds in a leadership role. He's got a leadership of two. That's not very impressive. And he made it. Very good. So this guy comes even for free, places it here now, 
the lookout and now uh, he can reroll one die when scouting and he's immune to the fog and the escort cards so that is pretty cool especially when you're a pirate okay uh, So I think right now uh, what I want to do is I want to do some repairs uh, but first I can flip this here that's sweet that these, these are long shot long guns uh, so I'm gonna buy them for three bucks and then I can do repairs I can improve my cargo bay by one and also the hull and I think each point costs me each point of damage I want to get rid of costs me a buck if I'm not mistaken repairs no actually two holy crap okay so that means I gotta spend four for the damage plus three for the ship modification so the question is, do I really want to do the ship modification? Because I cannot take the modifications with me if I buy a better ship. So maybe I'm not going to do that. Um, for other people, it's not that bad because they can go to St. John and buy a better ship there. And there you can take the modifications with you. But I cannot go there because I have a, an English bounty. So maybe I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm just going to buy, uh, I'm going to do the repairs here for uh, four bucks. I want to go with my prisoners to Tortuga. And I guess I'm going to try to do a raid on the way. So, hmm. Yeah, I think I'm simply going to leave the harbor here. That's my first action. Oh, you know what? Before I do that, I'm also going to try to get a rumor. So I pay five bucks. Eh, two bucks. And I'm going to do an influence check. It's only two, so we'll see if that's... And I blew it. Shit, no rumors for me. So now I'm gonna move out here. That's my uh, second action. Is that true? No, that was actually my third action. I moved in, did a port action and moved out again. So that wasn't too impressive, but I had to do these repairs uh, because now I can get, uh, I have more cargo. I have more free cargo space. And yeah, okay. So it's Captain Thomas Nelson over here. And he's here in the sea zone of Petit Guave. And there he can follow this rumor. The mast of a ship has been spotted sticking out of the sea at low tide on a shoal, skull, I don't know how that is spelled, near Petit Guave. So he's got to do that scout action now, and that's going to be hard because he only has a scout value of one. So he's going to be very lucky here. Ah, uh, yeah, he didn't make it. That's a shame. So that simply means that, yeah, the, the rumor was basically just gossip. Or at least he didn't find it. The card is discarded and he wasted an action and two bucks okay so that was his first action and where does he want to go ah yeah he wanted to go hmm he wanted to get rid of his cocoa so he either goes to Nassau or to Caracas hmm we have southwest yeah it doesn't really matter I think I'm gonna go to Nassau then. 
one. What is that? The starting price to buy sell goods is two gold. What does that mean? Do I get less if I sell it there? Okay, I'm not totally sure how that works. I think I'm pretty sure that you can still sell the goods in demand for six bucks each. And I guess then if you buy goods, uh, if you basically, well, if you have the, the base price is two, the starting price to buy sell goods is two. Well, then maybe if you have a pair, it's only one and well I don't assume you get it for free if you have three of a kind so I guess that I still buy or pay one per good um, if I have three of a kind it's a little bit it's it's not quite clear and I didn't find anything in the rules either at least not on that sheet sheet here maybe there is something in the rules about that but eh. I don't know if that is. Damn, I don't think so. Okay, so let's go to the next turn. And we start with yellow, the pirate, and he's got a roll for the weather conditions. Now that is a six. So uh, I think it. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, the wind stays southwest. Uh, that's pretty bad news because he gets now caught in a storm. Holy crap, that's bad luck. This thing here, St. John, you can see here it follows this way. And now he's sitting here in a storm. Okay, now that clearly sucks. And... I gotta find out what that actually means. I think what you have to do is you're gonna have to roll a seamanship and for every dice which is not a success uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, here we go. Uh, starting the turn at a C in the C zone with a storm token Okay, uh, ah, yeah, receive three random hit minus one for every seamanship success. Okay, first we got to draw an event. Uh, okay, it's clemency. Players may during their next turn be pardoned by a single nation by paying five gold. A nation only offers such a pardon to captains with no more than one bounty from a nation. Well, I mean, we could do that, but then again, mm, I don't think so. No, I don't, I'm not gonna do that. Okay, uh, let's see. We're going to find out about that storm. We got a seamanship roll or seamanship value of only two. So this can be pretty dangerous for me. So I take three random hits minus the successes now. Okay, I got one success. That means I take only two random hits. Now the way that works is we draw, um, we roll two dice and that shows where the hits are placed. If it's a skull, I'm not sure who can determine. I think in a battle the attacker can determine where the hits are placed. I'm not sure what happens here but we're gonna find out. Oh fuck. Okay we got a two and a skull and we got some quite a mess going on here. I definitely need that dice tray. Okay, this is like this. So a two means I'm gonna lose one of my masts 
And now we're going to see what happens with the skull. I'm going to check that. So actually, if you roll a, a skull, the target can decide where to take the hits. So I think I'm going to take the hit here at the crew. Because if you're, if you're lucky, I can get the crew for free if I do a good roll. I think I need a leadership roll, but it's, it's going to be hard. Okay, um, yeah, that kind of sucks, obviously. Now I can sail. Now where do I want to go? I want to basically go to Tortuga. Hmm. Uh, let's see, one, two, and there I could do a raid. It's a little tricky, but I think I want to try it anyways. Okay, one, two, and then I want to do a scouting reaction, which is a little tricky now that I have all these damaged um, parts here. But I, I mean, I gotta take a risk uh, if I want to. Uh, if I want to get some successes here. So we're going to scout. Uh, we got a scouting value of 4 and this lookout thing. Well, that's 4. Yeah, that's, I can reroll a die. Okay. Okay, so we're going to need this. Okay, there is our success. Very good. Uh, so let's see what we find. Uh, that's a Dutch. Um, that's a Dutch ship. So I'm, I'm still not sure if I want to maybe even risk that. I mean, I always can go to my home uh, area, so that means basically, if I have a if I have a bounty on a Dutch ship, then I the only port I could not use would be Curaçao, and that's actually not so bad. Getting a Spanish bounty is much worse, you know, pretty much everything here is, is I mean, there are four, of, I think there are over there are six Spanish ports that would be affected otherwise. So maybe I don't want to necessarily take that risk. Yeah, I think I'm actually going to attack this guy. I could have then, I mean, I could have done that earlier too. So this was maybe not the most clever thing not to attack the guy in St. Martin. But hey, I, you know, making mistakes is, is easy in this game. Okay, so I'm going to try to attack this guy. I'm going to draw three cards. There we go. Okay, that looks pretty good, actually. Um, that, these are good cards. So these are already 10 gold. Now I got to do a seamanship roll, and we get a seamanship of two. Now that's not so great, but maybe if we're lucky, and we're not. Yeah, that sucks. So I cannot change anything. I have to accept that result. If I could have drawn another card. then there would be good chances that I could have found two more gold and in that way I would have gained a glory point. But that's not the case here. So all I can do is I can basically grab two cards for my cargo bay. Um, and I'm going to take a a damage at the hull. 
<sighs> so first I'm going to take 10 bucks. That's the gold that I plunder. And I'm going to keep the prisoners in here. Although I could take the exotic pets instead. You know, that's even better because if I go to Old Providence, ah, but I can't because I have an English bounty. So that does not make any sense. Okay, so I think I'm going to... Do I want to keep the wood? I don't know, man. No, I think I'm going to... It doesn't really matter, right? I'm going to discard the textiles. And then I'm going to keep the wood and the tobacco. Let's see how much money I have. Maybe I can afford a new ship in Tortuga. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I actually can if I go to Tortuga. I'm pretty sure I'll be able to afford a better ship there. That's definitely cool. But right now I'm, I'm done with my action here, sitting in the sea zone of Santo Domingo, and I get a Dutch bounty. And this is also placed here, and if I get another bounty, from the Dutch, it would go up one space to the two to indicate that it's two bounties. So I'm kind of stacking my bounties here at that space. Okay, let's see who's next. Blue is next. Okay, and they, they want to do that trade up here in Nassau. So they enter this harbor. And it says here, the starting price to buy or sell goods is two. And naval ships must roll. Okay, that's not so interesting. So overall, we can now make a good amount of money here because we have two of these. That gives me 12 bucks. It's not that great, but it's something. Um, so yeah, that goes here, and I will gain 12 bucks for that. Okay, I'm not in the best situation here, though. You know, I think what that actually means is that, yeah, if you buy a single good, you pay two gold, but I will still assume that you have to pay two gold per good even if you buy a pair it's just that the base price kind of changes right so we got now six cards here okay let's see what we can buy well wood seems pretty cheap but technically seen it's all now of course we got petite guaf we got these unlicensed naval flags this is not too far, and there's also wood in demand. Now, this is perfect. So we can buy the wood, and we can buy also something else, or two others, because it's still cheaper than... Uh, then it, I can sell it in Petit Guaf for three bucks, right? So I definitely make money here. So I'm going to buy these three. This is, these are four, yeah, these are simply eight bucks. And then I'm going to buy the contraband here, the unlicensed naval flags for another three bucks. So I have to spend 11. I hope I have that much. Yes, I do. Okay, great. And if I deliver that stuff at Petit Guaf, I think I can make some money there. Let's see how much that would be. That would be 10, 22, 
You know, I'm also considering buying a ship. So I gotta calculate wisely here. If I wanna, I think I can afford a. I think I can afford a rumor. Uh, this thing is discarded. I'm gonna spend two more bucks. I th I hope I can afford that. And then we gotta go and do that influence roll. It's four dice. And we're successful, so we're allowed to draw a rumor. Las tres torres. And again, we have to do a scouting a check and I'm sadly I'm really poor at these scouting checks okay an island off the coast of Trinidad is set to hold Las Tres Torres a castle inhabited by a mysterious eccentric of royal descent so I'm gonna go there and want to find that we gotta go down there and do a successful check well that's gonna be hard but it's still, it's, it's, I mean, it's really far away, so that is not exactly my concern right now. So we entered the harbor, and I think I'm not going to buy that improvement, uh, because I want to try to get a, a bigger ship as soon as possible, and then I'm simply going to lose that improvement if I, if I do it somewhere else than in St. John. So therefore, I'm going to be moving down, I'm going to be moving down again, so I'm... I entered, did the action, and I'm simply going to leave the harbor again, and these were my three actions. Okay. So last is going to be Captain John Knox, this guy over here. Now let's see, he had this adrift thing, which brings him into the Caribbean Sea. Gosh, it's hard to read, and this is Petit Graf. Okay, so, and then he wants to sell the rum in Tortuga, but he's pretty far from there. So first of all, I'm going to move into the Caribbean Sea as a first action, and then I can see if I can if I can do this drift thing here. A storm-damaged Spanish merchant ship is drifting in the Caribbean Sea. Ah, I see. I could draw five cards there if I'm successful. Well, that doesn't help me at the moment because my cargo hold is pretty filled. So I think I'm not going to do that right now, maybe at a later time. So that was my first action. Now as a second action, I'm going to move to Petit Graf. And I could do the race there, I think. I got to do a port action there. Hmm. You know, I'm really considering going to Tortuga first. Maybe I can find some wood that I can deliver in Petit Graf then. I don't know, it's hard to tell. Ah, uh, you know what? Well, on the other hand, if I want to go to the Caribbean, I got to do it anyways. Yeah, I think I want to go to Tortuga first. So I'm going to move in here. And, yeah, simply one, two, three, and this is it. Okay, so that was the end of that turn. Let's see what happens next. Blue starts. So this guy here, and... Well, I think he wanted to go to Petit Guave, exactly. He's got the wood and the unlicensed naval flags. But before he can do that, he has to roll for the storm. So let's see where that goes. That is a six. Okay. So again, it stays southwest, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So that means this storm moves down here, follows this path. Now, if it would go south or southwest in the next turn or southeast, 
that would mean it would disappear, it would go to, on land, and then the storm would simply disappear, right? Okay, um, so let's see, uh, oh, an event card, of course. Okay, we got again War and Peace. Uh, take a bounty token from each nation. What? Uh, if no war. If two nations are at war, everything is normalized. Empty the at war space. Okay, so that means the restrictions here. Have stopped, which is neat. And I tend to forget the effects of, of that. And now I can do my uh, actions here. So we got a southwest wind that doesn't really help me. So I'm going to move one space, two spaces. And three spaces. I think I, well, I could go here for free. One. Oh, actually, yeah, I can. I can do that. If I if I start here, I can go here for free. Then I can move down here one space. That is my first action. My second action is. Wait a minute. Am I a little bit? No, it's the same thing. I started I started in NASA, right? In the C zone. So one, two. Yeah, that means I can simply enter the port here, but I don't have um I don't have any actions left. So next is Jan Peterson Hoft. And he's got that well pretty damaged ship. And he wants to go to Tortuga. So he moves one space, another space in here. Let's see what that means. Pirates here are invisible to all French ships. NPCs never scout for French captains. Okay, so that means we're sitting now in Tortuga and we have one more action left. So let's see what we can do there. Oh, that's neat. So first of all, I want to sell all the stuff I have. Well, first I can sell the prisoners for 10 bucks. Okay, so now we got two goods and, well, there is no demand for that stuff here. So I'm going to sell them simply for six bucks. I mean, I've stolen them, so I still make money. And now let's see how much money we have. I think I need 35 bucks for a new ship. And I clearly have that. So that's pretty cool. You know, I think I just realized I think I forgot to move the treasure uh, galleon. I think I forgot to move it twice. So first it goes here, and then it goes here, and it takes it gets ten bucks. Uh, okay. Um, now I can sell my old ship first. And usually I would get five bucks for that, but because it has two damage, although the, the crew doesn't count, I think, but it, it still has two damage. It has a damage at the hull and a damage in the masts. So I only get three bucks instead of five. Each damage reduces the value by one. Okay, still, um, that's three bucks. And now, I can buy a new ship, which costs me 35 bucks. I mean, it depends on the ship, right? But I want to buy a... I, got, I think it was a frigate that I wanted to buy. Let's, let's see. 
Now the galleon is good for for merchants, but it has a super low maneuverability. The man of war cannot be bought. The brig is, is quite nice, but there is something better available. And I think this is this one here, the frigate. It has a, well, basically everything comes with a value of three. So the maneuverability goes a little down, but I have a higher cargo value and more crew, more cannons. So that is definitely good. Okay, what's kind of interesting is that the crew remains at one right now. So I basically didn't buy for, I didn't pay for the crew but only for the ship. So this goes all up now. Okay, great. Now, buying a new ship gives you a glory point. Uh, or at least buying a frigate gives you um, so a better ship. One of these, it's a frigate and a galleon. If you buy those, you get a glory point, but you can only do this once per captain. So this is the first glory point of the game, actually. It didn't work too well for the players until now, I think. So, uh, yeah, they, he managed to get a glory point. That also gives him a glory card. Okay, that card says interrogation. Play this card after winning crew combat or merchant raid. You interrogate some of the survivors. And here's some inter uh, interesting rumor draw rumor card. Okay, great. Um, that's definitely something we will do. And whenever you get a glory point, um, you, can, you can read that here, the crew loyalty also goes up one space. So that's pretty cool. That allows me now recruit for free in any port. That's perfect. Because usually, if I would have had to recruit, I had to do a leadership role to be successful and then I could fill my crew but my leadership isn't that good and if I would have not been successful in that role um, that would have meant I I could either wait and, and try a role in the next turn or I would have had to pay f uh, two bucks per crew member that I want to hire but in this way I can do it for free which is definitely Awesome. Okay, great. Now we got a couple of bucks left. Okay, what do we want to do with that? Well, first I think I want to buy here the rigs and sails. Because this is probably the ship I'm going to end the game with. And I got another maneuverability, which is pretty awesome. So that costs me three bucks. And well, I mean, now still got a bunch of money here. I might even consider buying some some ammunition, and then I might even consider attacking some other players. I have now the best chip, and I'm, a, I'm in a good shape. So maybe I should buy some ammunition. Let's see what we can find. Um, Targeting the crew is often a good thing if you want to try to um, if you want to win a battle So yeah, I think I want to do that. I think I want to I want to buy these Grave shot here yeah. What does that say? Nah, I don't know. Up to two skills to two hits. That's also neat. After board, the caltrops. Hmm, hard to tell. I mean, maybe I want to buy the caltrops. Yeah, why not? 
Let's do that. What are these? These here. Not so. Okay, I'm. I'm usually not a big fan of these special munition. I think it can help you, but I'm not so sure about it. And then I'm gonna try to find a rumor. So I'm gonna roll dice here, the, the, the influence check. And this time I was successful. So let's see what we find. Uh, that's pretty cool. Golden shipwreck. Spanish ship carrying newly minted coins is thought to be shipwrecked near San Juan. Where is that? That's right here. Okay, that's not too far. That might be definitely worth it. So I'm gonna take that rumor and I'm good in in these scouting things. So I got a good chance to find that wreck. So I am pretty much done here. I think I'm not totally sure How much actions? That's the thing, it's easy to forget the number of actions you have left. I think I have none left, but I think I started here in Santo Domingo. I'm pretty sure about that. Hmm. Yeah, okay, that means I have no actions left, which is... You know, it's it's lucky for this guy. If I could have scouted him, he would be in a bad position, maybe. But, okay, that's not happening here. And now, last is the red player. And now he wants to deliver the rum. And he also goes now to Tortuga and he enters the harbor. And now he can also make good amount of money here. He's got three of these cards and that means he will get 18 bucks. Now let me see how much money I have now. Do I have enough to buy a ship? That's gonna be close. So that's 20, 24, 25, 27, that's not going to be enough. I mean, maybe it is. I have two ship improvements. I think I get some extra money for these improvements. Let me see. Um, it gives me just one. So it seems I'm one buck short. I get one per modification. I'm not even sure if I... Yeah, that would cost me 35. Okay. So that means if I sell my ship, I get five bucks. So I would be at 25, 30, 32. Exactly. I'm one buck short. Now that's bad luck, but okay, um, there's nothing I can do about it, so hmm. I guess I'm just going to buy, uh, it's a little risky, I, I have, you know, there's a good chance now that I get attacked maybe by that other player. Um, As long as I stay in the harbor, I'm safe though. So maybe I want to do that. Okay, so we got three times cocoa. So I'm going to buy that for one buck each. Okay, there we go, three bucks, and then I think I'm going to buy the stolen documents as a contraband, 
because I think at some point I, I, I'm, I'm sure I want to go to St. John. This is my hometown, so I can stash money there. I can buy a new ship there for, and I can keep the mods. So there are a couple of reasons why I want to go there. So this is a very good one for me. So I'm going to spend another three bucks here. And then I'm done, I guess. Yeah. Okay, that was the action of John Knox. He's got one more action, but I think I'm not going to take it because then I'm sitting at Tortuga and this pirate, um, you know, he can then easily move out and start scouting me. Uh, and I think this is something I might be able to avoid if, um, if he moves first. Because then I can react to his actions. Okay, so yeah, I, I guess that's it for today and uh, I'm going to load this up now. I uh, hope to see you on the next video or on LonesomeGamer.com. Bye. So actually I'm back because I forgot something. The um, yeah, John Knox, he sold three cards of rum here in Tortuga, and that was in demand. And if you sell four, uh, three or more um, goods in demand, you get a glory point. So that means this guy gets a glory point. And that helps him with his crew. And it also gives him a glory card. Okay, pardon. Play this card and pay three gold for each bounty, bounty you reduce. That is cool. Um, so that's actually kind of interesting. You know, I could do that. I could do a raid or something. And then I could... Use this. The problem is, um, I still got a flute with a maneuverability of two. Hmm. Yeah, but sadly my... I mean, I still might consider it. It's interesting. I got, I got one more space in my cargo bay. So I might actually considering... Uh, I don't know, doing a merchant raid. My scouting is very weak, so, so that's kind of a problem here, but I might give it a shot. It's, uh, it might be worth it. Anyways, we'll see. Okay, so yeah, hope to see you on the next video. Bye.